In this video, we will be covering the dative case in Latin. For now, we will just be covering nouns in the first, second and third declensions. But if you want to know more, check out my videos on the fourth and fifth declensions. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Bambas Bat. Before we start, I want to give you this one page free cheat sheet for all the noun endings. It will really help you to get familiar with all the cases for the first, second and third declensions. There's a link in the description below, go and download it and have it to hand while you watch this video. So let's get straight to it. The dative is a really useful case for lots of reasons and it's used in several different ways. It's what's called the indirect object of a sentence. A noun in the dative case is almost always translated using the words to or for. So here's an example sentence. The friend gave wine to the mistress. The friend is in charge, so they are the nominative of the sentence. The wine is being given, so it's the accusative or the direct object of the verb. The mistress is the indirect object of the sentence. The wine is being given to her, so she is in the dative case. Let's have a go at this concept in English to start with. Which word is in the dative case in these sentences? They get harder as you go along. Pause the video here if you want to have a go at finding the dative for each sentence. Otherwise, I'm going to go through these now. Number one then, the teacher gave the cake to the students. For this one, the indirect object is the students. Their teacher would be nominative, the cake is the accusative, and the students are dative. They're translated using the word to, so that can also help me. For the second sentence, the girls bought a present for their mother. The mother is in the dative case. She is the one who will receive the gift. It is for her. The use of the word for here shows me she's in the dative, as well as the role she's playing in the sentence. The girls are nominative, the present is the accusative, and therefore she, the mother, must be the indirect object. Number three, and in this one, I have two twos in my sentence. The Romans liked to offer hospitality to guests. So which word is the dative? Well, first of all, liked to offer is a verb, liked, followed by an infinitive, to offer. Offer is a verb, not a noun, and verbs don't have cases. So I'll break it down again. The Romans are my nominative. Then I have my verb, liked. Then I have an infinitive, to offer, an accusative, hospitality, and finally I have my dative, to guests. The guests are the indirect object. The hospitality is given to them. Finally, number four, this one is a bit trickier. He showed me the food. There's no to or for here. I have tricked you. Ha <laughs> ha. However, one of these words is still a dative. The Latin would be very clear here, we'd see from the ending which it was. In English, we're just a bit lazy, to be honest. The nominative is he. The food is the accusative, as it's having the verb done to it. The indirect object, therefore, is me. Imagine the sentence instead said, he showed the food to me. So therefore, it's clear that me should be in the data. So now we have it sorted in English, let's have a look at some Latin. It's exactly the same theory in Latin as in the English sentences we've just looked at, but helpfully, Latin has very clear endings we can learn to show which noun is in the dative case. So here are the endings for the dative. Remember that in Latin we have declensions, which are groups of nouns that change in the same way. I'm only showing you the dative endings here, but don't forget that for the whole table of cases, you can download that free cheat sheet that's in the description below. And I really recommend you do this as it will really help with all the case endings, so the first three declensions. So the first and second plurals are really easy. The is ending is repeated throughout. The third plural is also very recognisable with the ibus ending, and that's one of my favourites because it's dead easy to recognise. So I know if I see is or ibus, it's probably a dative plural. Remember that the third declension can have a big change in the stem from the nominative. So regi comes from rex, which means king, regi and regibus. So the X has changed into that G. So just keep that in mind. Uh, important note, some verbs in Latin take the dative. This means that when you see them, you should expect to see a noun in the dative, in the dative case. It makes sense when you see the verb. So here is this list of some that you might meet. 
In English, it can be difficult to see why some of these might need a dative noun, but if you look at how I've translated them more literally in the square brackets, it should be more clear. So for credit, it means believe. But if you say give credit to, you can see why we then need a dative noun after it. Uh, for imperat, we would say he, uh, she commands or orders. But if you say it as she gives a command to, you can then see that you would need a dative case to reflect that too. You don't need to use the bracketed translations. You can use the normal, simpler translations uh, that come first. But it's just to show you the points to illustrate that they do take a dative case now. So time to look at some Latin sentences. The vocab down the side is split into nouns and verbs for ease with all the nouns in the nominative singular and the date of endings table is at the bottom of the page. Remember, if you want the full noun endings cheat sheet to help you, you can download it from the link in the description. Pause the video here if you want to have a go on your own. Otherwise, I'm going to go through these now. Sentence one, Rex Clementiam inimicis dedit. The dative here is inimicis. It matches my second declension dative plural in my table at the bottom. So it means to the enemies. Now I need to find out what they are the indirect object of. So Rex is my nominative. The king is in charge. Next, I go to the verb, dedit, which means gives. So I have the king gives something and then to the enemies. What is he giving them? Clementium is my accusative and it means mercy. So the king gives mercy to the enemies. For the next one, puer epistulam ancillae refert. Now ancillae could be genitive singular, dative singular, or nominative plural. Ancillae, that A-E ending, is very, very common. However, I can rule a couple out. I know that it isn't nominative plural because my verb, refert, is singular, means he or she returns something. So my nominative also must be singular to match my verb. So I can rule out the nominative plural for ankylai. It could be genitive of the slave girl or dative to the slave girl. The dative makes the most sense in this sentence, as we'll see when we do the rest, but you need to be able to keep both options in mind. If you're working on paper, it might help to write both options above the word, uh, just so you remember them when you come back after you've figured out what all the words mean. So, Puer is the boy and he is in charge of the sentence. The verb is refert, returns, and epistulam is the accusative, the letter. So the whole sentence means the boy returns the letter to the slave girl. Number three, Puella domini credit. Puella is my nominative singular, so the girl is in charge. Credit means believes and the domini is a dative, so to or for the master. In this case, because credit takes the dative, we can think of it as gives belief to the master. But a more tra natural translation of this sentence is the girl believes the master. For sentence four, captivi Romanis servient. Captivus and Romanus are both second declension nouns. So therefore I know that captivi is the nominative plural because it matches the plural verb. And therefore Romanis is a dative plural. I need to keep in mind whether it's to or for the Romans because either could be fine. So keep that in mind for now. So captiwi are my subject. The verb means serve or are in service to. And again, this verb takes the dative. Literally, you could say this sentence means prisoners are in service to the Romans. But more naturally, we can say the prisoners serve the Romans. And finally, number five, mercatores candidato favent. Mercatores is nominative plural, it's third declension, so they are in charge of the sentence. Favent means support, and it's another verb that takes the dative, so I should be expecting a dative noun. Now that's candidato to the candidate. If I'm doing this sentence literally, it means the merchants give support to the candidate, and that's perfectly fine, but more naturally, you could say the merchants support the candidate. So there you have it, the dative case in Latin. I really hope this was useful to you. Don't forget to go and download that free one page cheat sheet for nouns from the link below. You'll find it really useful for learning the endings of the most common noun declensions. 
and I promise that's the last time I mention it in this video because the video is finished. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Bam Bass Bat.